I'm scared. Now, <laughs> you should be. You, you should be. Oh, you should be. <laughs> This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that helps you make the website of your dreams. Hey girlies, welcome back to my channel. As you can tell, we will be diving into season two of Make It or Break It. It's been a minute because I do in fact have other responsibilities outside of YouTube, but I do so appreciate your patience. Thank you guys all again for your support on part one. I wasn't really sure if anyone would care about it, but I'm glad that it's found its people. Please do subscribe and give it a thumbs up. If you somehow haven't seen part one, which covers season one, please go watch that first. Otherwise, this video will make no sense to you. Unless you're just one of those people who wants to just jump into season two, go ahead. So I do have a few disclaimers because this is the internet. I am not a gymnast, <laughs> nor am I an athlete. But I can recognize this show is very unrealistic when it comes to the whole elite gymnastics world. This is all for fun. And if you have any grievances with the plot, please feel free to contact ABC Family, now known as Freeform. Another more serious disclaimer, the season heavily focuses on disordered eating, exercising, and ED, specifically anorexia nervosa. Like it's a big plot point. Symptoms literally start episode two and it's discussed throughout the entire rest of the season. I know this is something many people struggle with so please proceed with caution and maybe don't watch this if you think it might be triggering. Although I haven't struggled with an ED myself, my background is in psych and so I've read a lot of academic literature and have studied them for quite a few years now. This is all to say I will be adding commentary on how I feel the show did on these topics. However, if I misspeak or you have any differing opinions or just any context you'd like to add, please feel free to comment your thoughts below. I'd love to have an open and respectful conversation about this. Okay, so now back to the fun stuff. Here's a really quick recap before diving into season two. So Emily is still the poor one, Kaylee is still the national champ, Lauren is still the worst person ever, and Payson, who broke her back last season, has recovered and she is still that girl. Got it? Great. Friends, we are back in Boulder. Episode one of season two, we find out that The Rock has gone full rebel mode. They are well and truly into their reputation eras and to prove it, they're doing a full magazine shoot deeming themselves the Rock Rebels. While the photo shoot is still going on, Payson is still practicing getting her vaults back to where they were. Remember, she has recovered for breaking her back, but she's still not officially back on the US national team yet because she still needs to get her skills back. Payson, however, is in good spirits and is determined to win first place at Worlds. Rock girlies are sort of on a high right now after just defeating China in the unsanctioned event that took place of the season one finale. Emily, however, However, is still nervous because she still doesn't know if the NGO, it's kind of like Make It or Break It's version of USA Gymnastics, isn't going to reinstate her scholarship. For those of you who don't remember, Emily got her scholarship rescinded after working at the famous Pizza Shack because she wasn't allowed to have a job and competed against China. But girls tell her not to worry about it. Payson's mom is back to co-managing at The Rock with Summer and is a little worried because the national team has this huge invitational in France next week and The Rock still hasn't heard from the NGO about their travel arrangements and they normally would have heard back by now. Sasha tells Summer he's not worried though because the girls proved themselves in the meet against China so the NGO wouldn't make the same mistake by not sending them to France. During the shoot we also find out that Carter still hasn't called Kaylee back for the season one finale. Kaylee called Carter saying that she loves him but what she didn't know was that Carter never showed up because he was busy making out with Lauren. And so the girlies are still on cloud nine when Ellen Beals, the villain from season one, interrupts their shoot. Sasha thinks Ellen's there about the travel arrangements of France but Ellen's got different plans and breaks the news that no one from The Rock is going to France. Not only that because the girls aren't going to France. In fact, you're all suspended from the national team until further notice. Sasha still believes they're going to France and says that the NGO is just trying to make them sweat. He tells the rock girlies to do nothing and wait because eventually the committee will back down. They're going to back down and they're going to take you to France. And as long as we don't panic and go begging for forgiveness, you'll go there with all the respect you've earned and your fate's in your own hands. Stand strong and all stand together. Payson's also going to be asked to be petitioned onto the national team because she wants to get her career back on track. Apparently they made exceptions in the past for top ranked gymnasts so she's going to go with the girlies to France and try out there. After practice, 
Lauren questions whether Payson's ready to come back, and Kaylee kills me here. Aren't you worried that she might beat you at nationals next year? If Payson gets petitioned back on, that means somebody's getting booted off. So what should we do? Hit her in the knees with a baseball bat? Kaylee tells Lauren about Carter never coming to see her, and Lauren pretends she hasn't spoken to Carter since he moved out of her garage apartment. In other news, Emily makes her mom promise that they won't take any money from Steve Tanner because remember, her mom and Lauren's dad are dating to help pay rent or for any other reason. Emily also goes back to the pizza shack so they can make some more money. Kaylee confronts Carter at the pizza shack, and Carter tells Kaylee that he thinks they're just better off as friends. Is, um... Is there something you're not telling me? All I know to tell you right now is that it's over. My thing is at least be man enough to tell her that you're sleeping with her best friend. Where have we seen this before? Oh yeah, season one. While Kaylee's crying in the pizza shack bathroom, Lauren shows up at the restaurant in a trench coat and lingerie. Girl, you are 16. Please put your clothes on. Carter freaks out because he doesn't want Kaylee to see Lauren there. And Lauren tells Carter not to tell Kaylee about them because Kaylee will hate her. And Carter gives her an ultimatum, either Lauren's friendship with Kaylee or her relationship with Carter. While on a date, Miss Kometko tells Mr. Tanner that they lost their scholarship, but tells Steve to keep his money in his pocket because they don't need it. Back at The Rock, Sasha tells Payson she's not ready to petition onto the national team, and he points out her growth spurt. Being out of the gym has triggered her puberty to start. Payson starts freaking out because if she grows, she'll lose some of her skills. I'll lose some of my skills. This can't be happening. We can deal with this. You just need to be patient and accept that your body is changing. I just wanted to take a quick second to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Y'all know me and Squarespace are besties. We go way back as someone whose strength is definitely not design at all. Squarespace makes building a website super easy. I wanted to give my website a makeover and with Squarespace's flexible design tools, I was able to find the coolest backgrounds and play around with the colors that I felt really fit my chaotic Y2K Tumblr colorful vision. As a YouTuber, I was so excited to see that Squarespace has this feature that allows you to embed videos directly into your site. It's literally so convenient. Squarespace really helps you take your website to the next level with their embedded feature that allows you to add anything from Spotify and SoundCloud playlists to literally podcasts. Like, it is insane. So naturally, I had to update my site with my favorite early 2000s playlist curated by yours truly. You guys are all girl bosses, and do you know what girl bosses need? great websites. Whether you're running a small business, working on a cool project, or if you just want to create a sick website, Squarespace has got you. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash basicgirl to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into it. Anyway, across town, Carter and Lauren are canoodling in bed. If I have to see it, so do you guys. Carter, the romantic he is, tells Lauren that he picked her because she resembles his late mother. I needed someone. You took care of me. No one's done that since my mother died. Love that. They decided that they're gonna tell Kaylee after the meet in France. In this moment, I know Lauren is just so happy with herself that she has one thing Kaylee doesn't. Lauren is literally obsessed with Kaylee. Meanwhile, Kaylee is just sticking to her own lane. So later on in the episode, the girls are starting to get more worried about their chances of going to France. Lauren sees a tweet about Kelly Parker, who was like the main rival in last season, saying that there was a national team meeting that the girls weren't invited to. Not only that, but at this meeting, the girls who who are going to France were selected. Freaked out, the Rock girlies unanimously call a meeting of their own and decide to go to Beals and apologize to get back on the team. And this is all behind Sasha's back. At the end of the day, it's about whether we make the Olympic team. And that road doesn't go through Sasha, it goes through Ellen Beals. I say it's time we kiss the asses that matter. Ellen Beals makes them each pledge their allegiance to the National Gymnastics Organization and not Sasha, like they're in some sort of cult or something. And of course, Lauren's the first one to pledge, as she's the one who really pushed the girls to call the meeting in the first place. Who do you pledge your allegiance to? Your club coach or your national team? I pledge my allegiance to my country and the National Gymnastics Organization. Ellen Beals tells him that she'll plead their cases to the committee. On the way out, Payson tells 
Ellen Beals, who I will just be referring to as Beals. She wants to petition onto the national team and Beals tells her that she'll bring it up with the committee. Kaylee and Emily start feeling guilty about going behind Sasha's back, but the next day Beals comes to practice and tells the girlie that they're back on the national team and how they'll be ranked. Kaylee is ranked number one and she'll be going to France as a team captain. Emily is ranked number three. However, since Lauren didn't make the top six, she's not going to France. Don't ask me when these rankings were made. I do not know. It is not shown. We're just going with it. And Lauren is absolutely pissed off. No one else had the guts to come to you to apologize until I talked them into it. I'm the reason we came to see you this morning and I'm the reason we all pledged our allegiance to you and the NGO. Me. Payson finds out that she'll be going to France to petition in front of the committee. Sasha is completely gutted because he thought that this had only happened because the girls had laid low, but it turns out they went behind his back. Kaylee apologized to Sasha, but he shrugs it off and says it's okay. Lauren, who's still furious, tells her dad that she wants to go to France and that he needs to figure out a way to get her on the team going. Sasha's still worried because Payson only has two weeks until her petitioning and he still isn't sure she's ready. And Lauren, who is still pissed about not getting to go to France, tells Kaylee, guess what girlie? I stole your man. Carter didn't choose you, he chose me. You didn't get Carter, I did. And the night you called, he didn't answer because he was with me, sleeping with me. Someone finally picked me she is literally so petty then she literally speeds off in her car it's giving vroom vroom by charlie xcx mr tanner lauren's dad secretly meets with beals and asks her what she wants turns out beals wants sasha belov out of the sport in entirety which is convenient because mr tanner wants to get control of the rock beals makes a deal with mr tanner that if he helps her get rid of sasha she'll send lauren to france as an alternate which he obviously agrees to another part of the deal is that Mr. Tanner also wants Emily's scholarship reinstated. However, Beale says that that ship has sailed. So he decides to create a private endowment group so that he can anonymously sponsor Emily. Did you arrange for a private sports endowment group to fund a new scholarship? I don't see why not. No one can ever know it's me. Also find out that had the girls not caved, they would have ended up going to France anyway, just like Sasha thought. And that is episode one. This episode opens up with Lauren giving one of the worst French pronunciations I've ever heard. Je ne veux pas en France pour jouer la remplaçante. As a native French speaker, this hurt me. But in the words of great scholars BTS, Life goes on. 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 The girlies are flying to Calais, France for their international team meet, including Lauren, who is now joining as an alternate thanks to her dad's secret meeting with Ellen Beals. They're all excited, except Emily's kind of distracted because she just heard that Damon, remember her loser sort of ex-boyfriend from season one who's touring with Green Day, conveniently has a stop in Paris the night before their big meet. Emily doesn't want to risk seeing him though because she claims that Beals went out on a limb to get her scholarship back, but we, the audience, really know that it's Steve Tanner who privately funded the scholarship. On the way to the airport, Lauren apologizes for telling Kaylee about her and Carter the way that she did, but Kaylee says that she doesn't care because now she can just focus on gymnastics. I can finally focus on what's really important, winning the all-around Olympic gold medal in 2012. You should know we're having sex. Gotta love Lauren. Sasha tried to stop Payson from petitioning to be on the national team one last time, but Payson's determined and says that she's ready. The girls finally arrive to their hotel in France, and when they do, they see a huge commotion of girls freaking out over this one guy. Enter Austin Tucker. I already know my OG Make It or Break It fans are screaming. Austin is a men's gymnastics Olympic gold medalist, and he kind of has this brand of being the whole playboy of the gymnastics world. Kaylee insists they should introduce themselves because they're on the national team so he definitely knows who they are. Unfortunately when Kaylee goes to introduce herself Austin assumes she's a fan and not the reigning U.S. national champ. Well we haven't met but what do you want me to say? How, how about right here? Huh? Oh no. Uh Ellen Beals tells the girls they aren't allowed to leave their hotels or do any sightseeing and Kaylee is in charge of enforcing that as team captain. Also find out that Hot Marty is on leave 
pending review. Ellen Beals will be in charge of supervising their assistant coaches. Emily's going stir crazy in the hotel room and Lauren suggests Emily go and see Damon in France. But when Emily declines, Lauren's like, yeah, you're probably right because Damon probably has so many fans and groupies to keep him company. While getting ice for the room, Kaylee runs into Austin who still doesn't know who she is. Also keep in mind, she has a clay face mask on and that's when she snaps and admits who she is. That's it, you're one of the rock rebels. So you do know us. Know you? I love you. That thing against China? Very cool. Also, this is dumb, but I feel it's important to note that Austin's brand is always having sunglasses on. Yes, even while he's indoors practicing gymnastics. During practice, Lauren finds out since she's an alternate, she can only compete if someone gets injured or breaks the rules. So we already know she's scheming. Here we get the first mentioning of unhealthy comments towards Kaylee's body. From here on out, this will be a big topic in the show. Beals tells Kaylee that if she loses a few pounds, some moves will be easier for her to execute. Lauren shows Emily pictures of Damon with other girls that she found online. Must be like that every place he goes. Girls just throwing themselves at him. If he hooks up with anyone, it, it's not like he ever heard from you. And Which gets in Emily's head and she can't do her vaults. This episode randomly has a cameo from Nastia Lucan, who is an Olympic gold gym medalist in real life. Work hard. That's how I won my gold medal. Wow. Nastia Lucan. Emily decides that she shouldn't have to choose between gymnastics and a guy and fully believes Damon's the reason she even got on the national team. Lauren finally gets in her head and Emily decides she's gonna get closure from Damon by going to Paris. And Kaylee only allows this because she thinks that it's necessary for Emily to clear her head. The devil works hard, but Lauren Tanner works harder. For some idiotic reason, instead of buying her own train tickets, Emily allows Lauren to go up to the counter and buy them for her. Lauren purposely doesn't give Emily the return ticket and tells her that the singular ticket is actually a round trip ticket. Now I'm not going to bore you to death with more Emily and Damon nonsense. Long story short, they still love each other but say goodbye for what feels like the 10,000th time while trying to head home. Emily is very surprised to realize she can't and she finds out that she needs to buy a return ticket. But guess what? She doesn't have any money, so she's stuck. Back in the hotel, Payson, who's been super busy practicing for her petition, just learned that Emily's in Paris. <laughs> Y'all get it? Cause that one show yeah okay anyway all the girls are busy covering for emily with beals emily is busy doing cirque de soleil tricks in the subway station for money in the midst of her greatest showman era emily runs into austin in the train station and as the fiscally conservative king he is he tells her he doesn't give out handouts i'll pay you back i promise sorry but my mom taught me neither a borrower nor a lender be but if she can do a full twist, then he'll buy her ticket back to Calais. And luckily, she lands it. To make it back to the hotel in one piece, and while Emily thanks him, Austin oddly pulls out, where's my hug at? And everything's all hunky-dory, right? Wrong. Just as they're hugging, the elevator doors open, and who is standing there but none other than Ellen Beals. Two of you having a nice night? So Emily then got busted and Lauren ends up taking Emily's spot during the invitational. Like, I do have to admit, Lauren is a little bit of a mastermind, I fear. I fear her mind is powerful at times. Like, the way she's able to manipulate and pull people's strings like a puppet master is a little bit chilling, you know, it's a bit sinister. And she'll always be famous for that. It's finally time for Payson's audition in front of the committee to petition onto the national team. And her petition goes really well, but she won't find out if she gets it until after the competition. As Lauren's chalking up, Beals confronts her, and here we find out that after Payson and Kaylee went to bed, Lauren ratted out Emily to Beals about being in Paris. Like that little snake. She's never been to Paris. No telling what could have happened. I don't know if she's capable of sticking to the rules. It's not her. It's just the way she was raised. Kaylee's not stupid though and confronts Lauren and Lauren plays the who me? Lauren claims that she only wanted Emily to see Damon because she knows what it's like to be in love, i.e. Carter. You know what really hurts? That we've been friends since we were eight years old and you think so little of me. I can't believe you think I'm that conniving. 
<laughs> Lawrence also determined to beat Kaylee in the all around to prove that she can have a boyfriend and still be a beast at gymnastics. And Kaylee's like, bring it on. So now the entire meet is just basically the two of them competing with each other. God, this is so annoying, but I have to include it. Damon shows up to the meet and Emily contemplates quitting gymnastics, but Damon convinces her not to. And they make a pact to meet in Paris after the 2012 Olympics under the Eiffel Tower. That's literally extremely cheesy, but let me mind my business. While the final scores are being tabulated, the moment has come to find out if Payson's petition onto the team got accepted. And unfortunately, y'all, and I was shocked, Payson's denied and she will not be joining the national team this year. The scores are in and Kaylee won gold in the all around in France and Lauren ends up getting bronze. So Kaylee beat Lauren as she should. You've got to be used to looking up by now, huh Lauren? Any chance to knock Lauren Tanner down a peg is a moment I will enjoy. As a team, the US overall comes in in silver. Lastly, at the end of the episode, we find out that Beals purposely let Payson petition, even though she knew that Payson wasn't ready. It's a shame Payson Keeler was so unprepared. I know, I told her to delay her petition, but Sasha Belov insisted. Which paints him as this sort of monster. Y'all, the claws are truly out. They want Sasha Belov gone. Guys, we finally get a Becca sighting in episode three. You may be like, who the heck is Becca? And I don't even blame you because I think the writers actually forgot Payson's little sister even exists. In light of Payson not making the national team, she refuses to go to Rock and claims that she doesn't feel well, which is really strange for Payson because that girl would move into the gym if she could. On a completely different note, Lauren and her dad are prepping for Lauren's grandma on her dad's side to come for a visit. And Lauren also tells her dad to get a vasectomy so that Miss Kometko can't entrap him into a marriage. Lauren also insists that her dad not bring Miss Kometko around to meet grandma and Mr. Tanner definitely agrees. At the gym, Sasha pulls Kaylee aside, congratulates her for winning gold. Kaylee says that it's really sinking in that she's national champ and she really feels like she deserves it. And I love that for her. But Sasha also tells her something else. You set the example for all the girls who train here and on the national team. Everything they do, every victory, every mistake is your responsibility. Responsibility. I get what he's saying here, but man, is that a lot of pressure to put on someone. But Kaylee gives Emily a promise ring, which symbolizes no distractions, i.e. boys, and a commitment to gymnastics. Kaylee also has an extra ring that Lauren thinks is for her, but it's actually for Payson. Lauren doesn't get one because she's sleeping with Carter. <laughs> We cut to a figure in all leather riding through the streets of Boulder on a motorcycle and parking at the rock. Who is this mysterious figure you ask? None other than Austin Tucker. If you can't tell by the edgy background music, he's a bad boy. The girlies find out Austin's gonna be training at The Rock. I wish I could tell you the strange rock music goes away, but nope, it literally plays every time Austin happens to do gymnastics. Lauren's grandma comes to visit and finds out that Summer and her dad aren't engaged anymore. And Lauren realizes that if her grandma found out about her dad dating someone like Emily's mom, she'd hate her. So she devises a plan and gets her grandma to invite Miss Kometko and Emily over for dinner. Sasha visits Payson at home and tries to convince her that they can work together to help her become a different kind of gymnast. Instead of being a power gymnast, you can be more of an artistic gymnast, like Nastia. But I'm not like her. See, I disagree. Payson doesn't want to be an artistic gymnast though because he doesn't believe she's built for graceful dancing. We later find out that this stems from when she was into ice skating and people told her that she didn't have the body type for it and also wasn't graceful. Payson eventually comes around though and agrees to resume her training at The Rock. It's a dinner at the Tanner's house and Lauren's going in on Emily and her mom. Like she's doing everything in her power to embarrass them. I intended to go to college, but circumstances weren't in my favor. Circumstances? I think she means getting knocked up with Emily. How old were you? Emily and her mom end up leaving early and after dinner, Lauren's grandma chews her up and I was living for it. True class is exhibiting manners when someone is trying to pull you into the gutter. And Lauren, the only person at that table tonight who was truly tacky was you. Granny, drag her. The next day, to make up for dinner, Lauren's dad and Emily's mom announced their relationship at The Rock. Austin also tells Kaylee the real reason he came to Boulder. I've been getting a little scattered. I needed a little inspiration. So I came here because The Rock girls are it. The girls are on fire. The girlies, minus Lauren, go to hang out at Kaylee's house, and Lauren feels left out. But raise your hand if you care. <laughs> yeah, me neither. 
In episode four, Emily gets her first check from her new scholarship, which is double what her old scholarship was. Mr. Tanner really hooked them up. Emily's mom also surprises her with this gorgeous white custom Leo. This is a huge deal for Emily because while all the other rock girlies have been training in their custom Leo since practically birth, she's never had a custom Leo before. Leos are not cheap. Team USA, they always wear GK Leos. GK competition Leos basically start at $200, which is not cheap. At The Rock, Sasha is basically making Payson start from the ground up. Y'all, he literally has my girl doing cartwheels with a level one gymnast who are like children. In other news, there's an award ceremony the following night and Lauren's campaigning for the Rocky Award, which is an award for congeniality, ironically, that the entire gym votes on, which Kaylee has won three years in a row. But this year, Kaylee's winning Gymnast of the Year, which is an award previously held by Payson for the past five years. All day, everyone's been complimenting Emily's Leo and even Lauren and Sasha take notice. That's a custom Leo. Those fabrics aren't even available yet. I tried to get one last month. And you're looking like a winner from the inside out in that dazzling new Leo. Kaylee's super happy because it's looking like her parents have been getting along. So she thinks that they're going to be getting back together. Remember last season, her mom cheated on her dad with Hot Marty. So she says it's only a matter of time before her dad moves back in. In order to get more votes, Lauren gets a smoothie truck to come to the rock and plans to buy Erin free smoothie. While waiting for her drinks, Lauren overhears two younger gymnasts talking about Emily and how she'll probably win the Rocky Award. Pissed off, Lauren then brings her smoothies over to Payson, Kaylee, and Emily, but before giving Emily her smoothie, Lauren tilts the tray, thus accidentally spilling the smoothie and ruining Emily's brand new white Leo. I was so annoyed when I saw this. Emily's better than me because I would have started swinging. Later on, Miss Kometko rightfully so goes off on Lauren for ruining her Leo and it turns out that she spent $300 on it. Honey, if you can balance on a four inch beam, don't tell me you can't balance a 24 ounce beverage. Oh. Kaylee's having trouble nailing a round off Arabian mouth and she wants to nail it because our Chinese queen, Genji Cho from last season, is the only person in the world who can nail it and she wants to be the second. Sasha tells Kaylee, Kaylee, Genji will always have a huge advantage over you with this move. It favors the really tiny girls and Genji is at least 10 pounds lighter than you. And this drives Kaylee to start working out extra outside of practice. So it's the night of the banquet awards her money and things are already getting messy. When no one's looking, Mr. Tanner takes the voting box for the Rocky Award and sneaks upstairs with it. So there's that. And the rest of the ceremony is just as chaotic. The Rockets for some reason decide to do a tribute to to Sasha that involves singing. And of course, Lauren tries to steal the show. Sasha Bella, Sasha Bella. Thanks to Mr. Tanner tampering with the vote, Lauren unsurprisingly wins the Rocky Award and everyone is looking at each other like, how did this happen? Where were the stopped account enthusiasts when we needed them the most? Like literally they were silent, nowhere to be found as usual. And Lauren's acceptance speech is so long. I, I promise you continue to be your friend, your mentor, your leader, your... Kaylee is on cloud nine until she finds her dad's signed divorce papers in his jacket pocket while he's in the bathroom. Sasha has one more surprise award for the night called the Championship Cup, aka the Payson Keeler Award. Imagine being that big of a baddie that you have a whole award named after you. There's a big tribute video where a bunch of real life Olympic and national US gymnasts talk about how great Payson is, which is pretty cool that they got all those people to be in the show. On a completely different note, after the ceremony, Kaylee breaks down and basically begs her parents to stay together. I am your daughter. Your decision to end your marriage should have everything to do with me. Six months. Just wait six more months. Nothing like a guilt trip from your teenage daughter to revive a marriage and I've always said that and if you've never heard me say that you haven't been listening. Episode 5 opens with Kaylee doing an intent at home workout. She is fully determined to catch up with Genji Cho. She even has a poster in front of her treadmill for motivation. Even though her parents aren't getting a divorce yet, Kaylee's dad gets a new apartment about two minutes from her house. But to keep him even closer, Kaylee decides that she wants her parents to be her co-managers. What happened to her manager slash PR person from last season? It is never addressed. Lauren tells Carter that she wants him to say those three words because she feels like she's given a lot up to be with him. I'm constantly lying to my dad. I've lost Kaylee as my best friend and she practically treats me like the gym tramp. 
Carter says that he cares about her, but he doesn't want to say it yet. And of course, Lauren gets upset. It's a big day at the gym because the girlies got to get their floor routine down for World's Trials, which are two months out. Lauren wants a specific choreographer, Lacey Grimes, for her floor routine. And she tells her dad that she'll call, but Lauren ends up getting distracted when Carter asks her out on a real date because they haven't ever been on one before since all they do is sleep together. In the meantime, however, Emily's mom ends up hearing and she books Lacey for Emily before Lauren even gets a chance. However, to make it clear, she did not know that Lauren wanted that same choreographer. At The Rock, Kaylee's been trying her best to avoid and ignore Austin since, remember, she's sworn off boys. After seeing Carter and Lauren making out in his car, Kaylee rushes to leave the parking lot and almost runs Austin over. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Kaylee warns him to stay away from her and Emily before he gets kicked out. Lauren and Kaylee are still very much going at it, and I must say, Kaylee's comebacks this season are just sublime. I had such a good time with Carter last night. Oh, good. Looks like the only floor routine you're working on has you on your back. Emily's been having trouble learning her new choreo from her fancy choreographer, so she stays late after practice, and Austin helps her get unblocked and after the two get pizza at, of course, where else but the pizza shop. Austin and Emily end up getting into an argument though about money and Austin points out that Emily can't get the moves down because she feels guilty about hiring the choreographer. We spend our whole lives, give up our entire childhoods on a gamble. We're gambling on us. You gotta go all in, Emily. It's the floor dance presentation day. The girls will be showing off their new floor routines that they've been working on in front of the whole gym. So thanks to Kaylee's terrible attempt at the parent trap, her parents have completely ruined her floor routine. I am so sorry you had to see that, but I could not suffer through that alone. So after Kaylee, it's Lauren's turn to go next and she completely steals Emily's choreography that Emily worked so hard on. My girl put her blood, sweat, and tears into that routine and of course Lauren snatched it up in an attempt to prove that she is better. Emily starts freaking out because she can't go out there after Lauren with the same routine, but Austin gives Emily a pep talk and she ends up slaying the floor routine and everyone agrees that it was much better than Lauren's. Side note, I really like Austin as a character. He's a good friend to Emily and as you'll end up seeing, a good friend to a lot of other people in the show as well. After finding out from Austin that Lauren stole Emily's routine, Carter tells Lauren he can't say he loves her because she does stuff like that. I can't tell you I love you because you do stuff like you just did to Emily. I'm sorry, but I can't love that. Imagine your partner literally admitting to your face that they can't say they love you because your personality literally sucks because you're a terrible person. Like, I would have to go. Like, I'm so sorry. I'd have to go. Episode 6 starts off with Lauren catching Miss Kometko sneaking out of her house one morning and she is disgusting. Disgusted. Lauren literally acts like she found a live intruder. Lauren tells her dad that if her dad is sleeping around, then that means so can she. And he tells Lauren that she can't have relations until she's at least 18, unless she wants to get cut off. Lauren lies right through her teeth. You better not have sex with anyone until you're at least 18. You have nothing to worry about. I'm a virgin and I plan on staying one. Girl, we all know what's going on in the love shack above the garage. Checking back in with Kaylee, things are not looking great health-wise. Kaylee's still doing intense workouts, not to mention that these are extra workouts on top of her already grueling daily seven to eight hour gymnastics training. To make matters much worse, she's even begun tracking her calories and tracking her weight excessively. In just 15 days, she's gone from 112 pounds to 102, which is is pretty concerning. Also get a reappearance of Brian Kometko, Emily's little brother. He doesn't do much, but he's in it. The royal team members are being selected in three weeks. Only six of 12 girls can make it. Austin invites the Rock girls to a party after practice and all of the girls except Kaylee are interested because Austin says that other Olympians will be there. My girl Kaylee is not having it though and she tells Austin to beat it. In light of grueling practices leading up to world, Sasha lets them have the following day off to relax since coming Monday they'll have boot camp and training for world team trials will be crazy which means that they could actually go to Austin's party if they want. Kaylee, however, still thinks the girl should go in for practice. And then y'all, she literally goes in on them. Emily, you're not sticking your vault consistently. Lauren, you need to raise your DOD on bars. And 
Payson, well, let's face it, you're struggling with level seven and eight skills. She feels that as team captain, she should be pushing them and making sure that they're at the top of their game. Lauren decides she's gonna go to the party anyway, but Emily and Payson agree to follow Kaylee and not go. Still during practice, Carter says Lauren's behavior is a turn off, especially since Lauren refuses to apologize to Emily for stealing her routine. Kaylee sees Austin trying to convince Emily to go to his party and tells him to stop. And Payson is gonna sleep over at Kaylee's house, but Emily says that she can't because she has to help Brian with his homework. Lauren, however, puts it in Kaylee's mind that Emily's excuse is fake and that she is going to try and sneak off to the party. Didn't you see the way Emily's eyes lit up when he asked us? She and Austin have gotten to be pretty good friends and you ask me, I'm not the only one going to that party. Lauren runs into Summer and tells Summer that she needs to get back together with her dad because Lauren needs a good example in her life. Chloe has been spending the night over at her house and flaunting it in my face. If it's okay for them to be having premarital sex right down the hall, I guess it's okay for me to do it too. Summer foolishly still believes that Lauren is keeping her vow to wait till marriage next time. Girl, if only she knew. However, unbeknownst to Lauren or you guys for the matter because I haven't told you yet, Summer and Sasha have plans to go on a first date. If you're thinking, whoa, that came out of nowhere. It really didn't. Like they've been building up to Summer and Sasha throughout season one and season two. I just haven't mentioned it because I would rather bang my head into a wall than recount Summer and Sasha's relationship timeline because it's literally agonizing and boring. Yeah. Now you know. So that's fun. Back at Kaylee's house, after practice, Kaylee immediately starts doing a cardio workout. And here we get a first mention of someone having the slightest bit of concern for her training. It's fleeting, but it's there. Do you think maybe you're overtraining? You already ran five miles before practice this morning. Don't worry about it. I've got everything under control. Kaylee tells Payson that she thinks Emily lied and went to the party. So Kaylee ends up calling Emily's home phone to see if Emily's there, but Emily's brother Brian picks up and says that Emily went to the store. When Emily doesn't pick up her cell, Kaylee assumes that she broke the rules and went to the party. So she decides to check it out herself and Payson tags along. It's got a shower and change. Oh, shower and change? Can't go to Austin's party looking like this. Oh no. Because I'm sweaty. Right. Sasha and Summer go on their date at a restaurant that's not the pizza shop, which is wow, insane. However, there they see Miss Komet go and Tanner on a date, so they have to pretend that it's a business dinner for The Rock because they don't want anyone to know that they're together. Across town, instead of going into the party like a normal person, Kaylee decides to peep through the windows and bushes like an actual stalker to see if Emily's there because she doesn't want Austin to know that she came. Payson decides to stay in the car because she's not about to embarrass herself. Y'all can't tell me Payson doesn't look like a G in these glasses. Like, I want to know who from costuming gave this white girl those glasses. Like, you can't tell me Usher wouldn't have worn those back in the day. While engaging in stalker-like activities, Kaylee falls over the gate and into a pile of trash. Then for some reason, Kaylee ends up staying and drinking. This kind of annoyed me because Payson's literally in the car waiting to go. And meanwhile, my girl is chilling with a beer in hand while Austin picks out a piece of pepperoni from her hair. Lauren sees Kaylee at the party and being the agent of chaos that she is, she takes a picture of Kaylee and Austin together. Emily, who was actually at the store, sees the picture and gets pissed. Payson confronts Kaylee because she's tired of waiting in the car but Kaylee says that they gotta go before Emily finds out that they were here. Also everyone keeps reminding Kaylee of when she did the iconic keg stand from season one and she's so fed up. Yeah I did a keg stand which apparently was a lot more memorable than the gold medal I won at nationals. <laughs> Emily finally shows up at the party and Kaylee rushes to explain her side. The girls are still mad at Kaylee though because she's been super controlling. Try to control everything we say as well as everything we do. Hey, it's my job to keep everybody in line. Kaylee decides that she's going to lead by example and leave. Back at the restaurant, Summer confronts Miss Kometko in the bathroom about how her having premarital relations at their house is the bad example for their teenage daughters. One thing about Summer, it doesn't matter who you are. You could be seven, you could be 47. She is going to tell you her thoughts on premarital sex. Like she is going to. Before she can leave, Austin sees Kaylee upset and goes to talk to her and tells her that he understands the pressure to stay on top. Sometimes it helps to stop thinking so much and just let go a little. How? Austin and Kaylee, I see y'all, I see y'all. This would be a really cute moment and all if the cops didn't decide at that moment to roll up to the party. Clearly, they streamed Sticker by NCT. Roll up to the party. Roll up to the party. 
Roll up to the party. While Kaylee's internally freaking out, Emily and Lauren have a twister off where the loser has to do whatever the winner decides. Lauren wins and makes Emily accept her apology for stealing her choreo and ruining her leotard. But it's not like Lauren does that out of the kindness of her heart. She really only does that because Carter's standing right there and she wants him to think that she's not a heartless monster. The cops finally bust up the party and everyone scatters. The girls are running for their lives when the cops stop Lauren after she realizes that she forgot her purse like an idiot. And to cause a distraction, the rest of the girls start doing cartwheels and other fun gymnastics tricks. Well, what are we supposed to do? Uh, cause a distraction. Um. I really love how since season one, nothing has changed. When faced with any public adversity, the girls are going to do tricks. It doesn't matter if it's creeps at a gas station, high school mean girls, or the cops, they're going to flip for their lives and you have to respect that. Like, people should be scared. With the cops distracted, Lauren manages to slip away. The girls almost escape, but two more cop cars roll up, blocking their exits. To escape, they decide their only option is to jump into a nearby lake and start swimming away. I don't know either. Like. It, it really is as dumb as it sounds. After swimming away like convicts who've escaped a high security prison, the girls vent about their feelings. They realize that they're not like other girls. They're elite gymnasts. They can't do regular things like going to the mall or have crushes on celebrities. That's simply not allowed. Kaylee finally apologizes for being a control freak. You have been a little intense lately. I know, and I'm sorry. I'm just trying to be the leader that Payson was. I guess I don't know how to do that. And with that, the girlies, minus Lauren, who never had one, decide to throw away their promise rings in the water. So back across town, Miss Kometko is at Mr. Tanner's house after the date, and for some reason, he sends her to the garage to get some old kitchen supplies. So imagine her surprise when she walks into the storage room above the garage and turns on the lights to find Lauren and Carter in bed together. and she is horrified and she's not the only one. I feel like this season started off slow. However, we are getting into the best episodes. Lauren explains to Miss Kometko that she's only been sleeping with Carter because she doesn't have mom to confide in and begs Miss Kometko not to tell her dad. This happened because I don't have a mom. Please, Chloe, please don't tell. I'm sorry, but the mommy issues card is getting so old. Like, we get it. You were abandoned. This terrible excuse works. Emily's mom decides to keep her mouth shut. Mr. Tanner sees Lauren and Miss Kometko getting along and decides that it's a perfect time to grant her with a key to the house. So, yay for her, I guess. Oh, Emily's mom has been living it up at the Tanners. There's literally no hot water at Emily's house because I guess her mom forgot to pay the bills. I don't know why since they have money thanks to Mr. Tanner's secret scholarship, but... I digress. The next day is a big day at The Rock because it's the last national team practice before Worlds tryouts, so everyone needs to bring their A game, especially Emily since she screwed up in France by sneaking off. Not only is the national committee, including Ellen Beals, attending the practice, but my boy Hot Marty is back. So in my last video, a good amount of people were asking me why I call Hot Marty Hot Marty when Sasha's there. I'm so sorry, but when I look at Sasha Belov, I see a vampire. Like he just gives me vampire vibes. He looks like he could be Klaus from the Vampire Diaries' uglier uncle. And he's also blonde. And blonde men low-key scare me. But anyway, back to the show. Before practice, Seal starts bad-mouthing Emily to haunt Marty. Literally calls her a horse that can't be tamed. <laughs> Yikes. She's a horse that can't be tamed. We've all given her a chance to become a refined, elite, obedient athlete, but she won't take it. While the rest of the Rock Girlies are at national team practice, Sasha sends Payson to ballet class to learn more grace for her gymnastics, and she's having trouble keeping up. We have a very famous guest with us today. It's the hunchback of Notre Dame. Haunt Marty runs into Kaylee's mom. This is where she admits that she and her husband are getting a divorce, but insists that it wasn't about her and Haunt Marty's fling. And he says, It wasn't a fling. Not for me, anyway. I loved it, Ronnie. <laughs> I guess I still do. And don't worry, I'm not gonna 
you know, cross the line. I, I learned my lesson. Like, you can't tell me you don't kind of ship it. Like, you can't. Like, I don't believe you. And if you don't ship it, you just don't see the vision. You don't see what it could be if he wasn't Kaylee's coach. Sasha talks to Hot Marty about Kaylee being determined to master the round off Arabian Mount. And Sasha's nervous because he knows Kaylee thinks that she has to lose weight to do it. Hot Marty agrees that it's just not a good idea if she thinks she has to do that. But when Sasha tries to tell Beals that he doesn't think it's healthy for Kaylee, she thinks she needs to lose weight for it. And I don't think yeah, this is national team practice, Ben Love. Your opinion doesn't matter. Beals kicks Sasha out of the club for the rest of the practice. During practice, Kelly Parker, who I will sometimes be referring to as KP just to make it easier, notices Kaylee's arms. What? I'm toner now because I'm working out more, training harder. You're just hurting yourself. When the girls walk into the national team practice the next day, Beals ambushes them with huge news. Surprise! So we all know that there's 12 girls on the national team, not to be confused with the rock club team. What you don't know is that only 10 of you will go on to the trials and we're choosing those 10 girls today. So that means two girls won't be able to continue on to the world trials. And for those of you who don't know, Worlds is huge. It's like a giant step towards the Olympics. It's basically the biggest meet before you go to the Olympics. You don't get into the Olympics without first going to Worlds. For context, Simone Biles has won the most world championship medals ever at 25 medals and has competed at five separate world championships. So this is a big deal. Not to compare any of them to Simone Biles. Emily's in the middle of showing her new floor routine when she rolls her ankle and she stops for a minute because she literally you know rolled her ankle and Beals immediately yells at her to get up and do her routine again and that pisses Hot Marty off and Hot Marty goes off on the mean gym lady and he eats her up and tells Beals to stop being a high school bully and to get over herself. I don't want Kaylee Cruz to do the round off Arabian Mount and I want you to give this girl a freaking break. Lady, it's not your will that will make the best gymnasts. It's their heart. And that is why I stand by my bestie, Hot Marty. Bielsen says that she has things to discuss with the National Committee and Hot Marty's like, yeah, girly, you do that. I literally, I love him so much. So after talking with the committee, Beals then returns and says that the committee feels that they've made a mistake by lifting his suspension and they fire him. They fire him. Yes, he chewed her up, but I wasn't expecting him to get fired over that. Without Sasha or Hot Marty looking out for them, the girls don't really have anyone during the national team practices who has their best interests in mind for them. On his way out, Hot Marty tells Emily to never give up. I have never been more excited or amazed by anyone's raw talent. You are it, Emily. Don't let anyone take that away from you. you understand me? And I'm not going to lie, this speech kind of made me tear up the first time I ever watched it. Like, it's so sweet, but also so sad. And after a bomb speech, Hot Marty leaves the gym and the show to never be seen again. No, really. Like, it pains me to say that Hot Marty does not return and we're stuck with the likes of Dracula for the rest of the show. But the announcements aren't over. Ellen Beals is somehow now the new coach of the national team, even though she's got like literally no experience coaching. Practice starts back up again and Emily's about to do her vault, but Beals tells Emily to show the national committee her beam because she knows that beam is Emily's worst rotation. Beals really has it out for this girl. Like Emily remembered Hot Marty's speech and she blocks out the haters and she slays her beam routine. After Lauren's done with her rotations for the national committee, Beals hands her a large envelope to give to her dad. Lauren, being the nosy person she is, opens it and finds papers and receipts of checks from her dad sending several payments of $2,000 to Emily under the name of something called the Kipman Endowment Group. So in case it hasn't sunken in, Ellen Beals, knowing that Mr. Tanner wanted to keep his sponsorship of Emily a secret from everyone, just purposely gave those papers to Lauren knowing that she would look at them and find out. Lauren being Lauren immediately confronts Emily who doesn't believe her. My father is funding your whole life, but I can promise he's not paying you because you're a great gymnast. He's paying your mother because she's having sex with him. Miss Kometko sees Emily storm out of the gym and follows her and Miss Kometko swears she has no idea, which is true. Emily, however, says that she can't go back in there because she can't face Beals and Lauren right now since she's too embarrassed. But thankfully, Emily's mom talks some sense into her and Emily finishes out the rest of her practice. Kaylee does that hard mount move, even though it's not ready. And unfortunately, she nails it. I say unfortunately because this happy response from Beals and the national committee only serves as a positive reinforcement for Kaylee 
Kaylee's unhealthy behavior like overworking out and restrictive eating. Kelly Parker tells Beals that Kaylee's getting too thin but Beals writes it off as a champion who's disciplined. She's so evil like it's crazy. Just checking back in quickly with Payson. She's been improving at her ballet which is great. Sasha even joined her for a few classes to show her that she wasn't alone in this new training style. And to keep Payson encouraged, Sasha gives Payson his Olympic gold medal. I'm just lending it to you until you can replace it with one of your own. You're that sure that I'm going to make it to the Olympics, that your plan for me will work? Finally, the 10 girls who will be moving on to try out and get a spot on one of the six world team spots are announced and all three girls, Emily, Kaylee, and Lauren, make the world trials which are in two weeks so go girlies. In other news, Emily's back to working at the pizza shack since they're broke again. That girl will never be free of that establishment, I swear. Back at the rock, Sasha, Miss Keeler, and Summer are all catching up on the tea of the day. Apparently, after Hot Marty left, he told Sasha to watch his back because Ellen Beals is coming for him next. Summer tells the two of them that she heard that Mr. Tanner and Ellen Beals have been working closely together and that's when Miss Keeler decides that she's going to run for president of the parents board so Steve can't win because if Steve wins then Beals will have control of The Rock too. The episode ends with Lauren ripping up pictures of her and her dad while dramatically crying and Kaylee staring at herself and her body in the mirror. This episode is easily one of the most entertaining of the season and you'll see why. Let's jump into episode 8. In the aftermath of the news coming out of Lauren's dad secretly funding Emily's entire life, Lauren is furious at her dad for, in her words, supporting her competition. During the middle of their fight, Emily shows up at the Tanner's doorstep and Lauren immediately accuses her of coming back for more handouts, but Emily surprises them both by handing Mr. Tanner a wad of cash. She's really determined to pay them back every penny. The next morning, Kaylee pulls up to the rock, but when she gets out of her car, she stumbles, but luckily Austin's there to help her. He notices her hands are also freezing. Back to Kaylee and her ED. What I will say about how the show handles Kaylee's ED is that they actually show symptoms of the disease. So oftentimes with like teen shows, it's super common to see a character throwing up or saying some offhanded comment about not eating and people think that that's all EDs are. Not saying that the rep in this show is perfect, but seeing symptoms like lightheadedness and constantly being cold due to malnutrition, which are common symptoms of anorexia, is something that I feel is more informative to audiences about how EDs and their symptoms actually affect people. So in the light of all the secrets and lies, Miss Kometko tells Lauren that she needs to do the right thing. So you have a choice. Either you tell your father that you and Carter are sexually active or I will. So back to Payson, she's in a fantastic mood because she's been really inspired by ballet and by Sasha. She's constantly admiring the gold medal he gave her. At the gym, Sasha tells Payson that she's getting better, but she needs a deeper connection to the more lyrical movements. To help with training, the gymnasts have started recording themselves doing routines so they can see where they can improve. Austin's shooting Kaylee's vault on the training cam when he notices her fingers are shaking. Also catches that she's a little faint after her vault and has to steady herself before walking away. Back with everyone's least favorite couple, Lauren tells Carter that Miss Kometko is going to tell her dad that they're having relations and Carter's obviously worried since technically the no dating rule is still a thing at the rock. Emily's confidence is really shaken because she really did believe that some professional group believed in her but that turned out to be fake. And Emily also finds out that her mom is still seeing Mr. Tanner and she literally reads her mom to filth on her past dating life. Like, it's bad. After you moved us two states away for a guy who turned out to be a tax cheat and after you gave our car to a guy who pretended to be in the CIA. The next day after practice, Carter says that he loves Lauren and she says it back. Are you sure you don't just care about getting kicked out of the rock? I love you. Y'all, that was the fakest declaration of love I've ever heard. If someone told you they loved you and it sounded like that, reevaluate that relationship. We all know the only reason he says that is so he doesn't get kicked out of the rock for good this time. Honestly, I don't really care what happens to that man. If he gets kicked out, I probably cheer. I will say Lauren is truly an artist. Moments after Carter walks away, she comes clean to Summer that she's been sleeping with him and that the whole time Chloe Kometko knew. She totally encouraged it. She talked to me about safe sex. She bought me condoms. She even took me to the doctor for the pill, you know, as a backup plan. 
I just know Summer was clutching her pearls. Lauren even tries to get Summer to tell her dad for her, but Summer doesn't really feel comfortable with that. So while Lauren's busy ruining lives, Austin ambushes Kaylee with a surprise picnic. She says that she's not hungry, but Austin isn't listening and tries to get her to eat. Kaylee, you had lunch five hours ago. So? You went through a really grueling practice today. Oh my God, are you testing me? Kaylee's absolutely pissed when she thinks that Austin's testing her and takes a bite to prove her point. He really went about it in the worst way possible. Back at the rock, Austin apologizes and reveals that his little sister, who was also a gymnast, struggled with anorexia and she wound up in the hospital but is in recovery. She started overtraining, restricting her calories. In a matter of a few months, I couldn't even recognize her anymore. Kelly apologizes for her reaction and Austin and Kaylee end up kissing, so good for them I guess. In less happy news, it turns out Summer wasn't that uncomfortable with telling Lauren's dad because she ends up telling Steve about Miss Kometko knowing about Lauren's frequent relationships and Mr. Tanner ends up breaking with Miss Kometko for that reason. Praise God. I literally can't stand 99.9% .9 of relationships in this show if you can't tell except Austin and Kaylee, but Kaylee needs to focus on herself right now. More great news, Emily comes home to the lights in the AC being out because the bills aren't paid. Brian's arm starts tingling and he says that it's because he ran out of his anti-seizure med. Miss Komet goes at work so it's up to Emily to figure something out. Emily runs to the pharmacy to get meds before Brian has a seizure but the meds are $220 since their insurance apparently doesn't cover it. We really gotta love the US healthcare system. It's been 12 years since this episode aired and man is it still accurate. The pharmacist tells Emily to leave and come back in the morning but Emily says that she can't can't because Brian is having seizure symptoms now. His medicine is covered. Can you please just go and check again? I can't help you tonight. Is what she did incredibly stupid? Yes. Should she have just called the ambulance? Also yes. But you do have to remember that she's a scared 16, 17 year old girl who can't reach her mom for advice. And if you've ever seen someone have a seizure, it's terrifying. So while she should have done literally anything else before resorting to stealing the meds, I can kind of see why she did it. Not that I condone it. Tuning back in with Payson. Payson's working late with Sasha and he's filming her floor routine and she has a major breakthrough and absolutely kills a new routine. And I love that for her. And then something happens. <laughs> Sasha, you inspire me. Payson. Yeah, so that did just happen. Payson did just kiss her coach and he rejected her as any sane adult should. I told y'all this episode was completely wild. Anyway, across town, Emily's given her brother the meds, so he's feeling much better. Then out of nowhere, there's knocking at the door and it's the coppers. Whoop, whoop, that's the sound of the police. Sorry guys, I had to do it. And they're here to arrest Emily, incarceration era, yes. Brian is shook. That boy did not know he was taking contraband meds. Like, he is scared. And y'all, I'm not gonna act like this scene isn't extremely funny. Like, I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you, it's funny. The episode ends with Kaylee at her house. She's counting calories in her journal and walking out of the room before immediately coming back into the room and getting on the treadmill for another workout. It's sadly clear that her ED is in full force. Okay, so I lied when I said episode eight was my favorite episode because episode nine is actually my favorite. I am a liar, but you will have to forgive me. Episode nine opens up with a super dramatic shot of Emily getting booked and bat down. And it's so funny to me. She gets one call and for some reason of all people, she calls Razor for help. Yes, Razor from the pizza shack from season one, who I frequently confuse with Damon because they're literally the same person. Turns out she tried getting a hold of her mom, but couldn't reach her. And Emily's mom does soon show up and she takes her home. Thus, Emily's incarceration has ended. It was kind of iconic, I'm not gonna lie. Back at the cruises, Kaylee's mom brings her breakfast because she noticed that Kaylee barely touched her dinner the night before. But once her mom leaves the room, Kaylee immediately throws her her food away. Payson's ranting to her mom about how she can't go in and face Sasha since she kissed him, only to find out that her mom already knows. Wait, you talked to him? Of course, he called me immediately. He's worried about you. Uh, have you talked to anyone else about this? I'm really happy Sasha ended up calling 
Payson's mom and telling her everything before Payson even did because that was probably the best way to handle the situation and it really shows that truly nothing creepy happened. The whole situation could have gone wrong really fast but I'm glad that the writers had Sasha handle it the way that he did. The next morning we also find out that Carter and Lauren broke up. Raise your hand if you care. Exactly me either. Let's move on. Lauren happens to be the first one at the gym and notices the training camera got left out and she decides to take a peek at the footage. No freaking way. She takes out the disc before smiling to herself. Like anytime Lauren smiles, people should be scared. Like people should be quaking because that girl is insane. I think I told you guys this, but I'm not sure yet. But Lauren's dad and Payson's mom are going head to head to win president of the parent board. Remember that if Lauren's dad, Mr. Tanner wins, he'll oust Sasha Belov and he and Ellen Beals will take control of The Rock. And that is exactly why Payson's mom is running. Thanks to Summer doing an early poll, Miss Keeler knows that Alex Cruz, who's Kaylee's dad and former president of the parents board, is the swing vote. And so whoever he endorses will probably win. Sasha sees Kaylee nailing her moves, but tells her that he's worried that she still may be trying to to lose weight and healthily but Kaylee of course says that she's fine which we as an audience all know that she isn't y'all this episode has so much tea while Lauren's at practice a woman named Leslie shows up to the Tanner house and it turns out it's Lauren's biological mom who abandoned her you know the ex addict that Mr. Tanner threatened to stay away from his daughter in season one you seem to forget there's still a restraining order forbidding you from having any contact with Lauren that was granted when I was still using Leslie says that she's clean now and just wants to see Lauren and make amends and Mr. Tanner is like I will literally have you arrested expeditiously if you even take a step near her if you even breathe near her so there's that. Payson's been avoiding Sasha but Miss Keeler and Sasha tell Payson that they want to get things out in the open and Payson says that she just wants to forget about it and move on. Lauren keeps trying to convince Summer that she and her dad should be together but Summer finally cracks and tells her that she's seeing Sasha and Lauren is distraught and immediately starts sobbing. He's keeping you from being my mom. If you were really here for me you wouldn't have dumped my father for my coach. <laughs> I don't feel bad like she is just so annoying like you have to move on. Now I don't usually say this because Lauren is perpetually in her reputation era like she is a literal villain. You guys may not have known this but Lauren Tanner actually taught Thanos everything he knows but because what she does next is probably the worst thing she does in the history of the show we do have to properly welcome Lauren into her reputation era. God I just I get mad just thinking about it. Remember the footage of Sasha and Payson kissing? Yeah. Well, she takes that footage and purposely edits out the part where Sasha clearly and immediately pushes Payson away. So it just looks like they're kissing. And like the snake she is, she then emails that footage to Ellen Beals of all people, saying that Sasha isn't the man people think he is, thus giving birth to something I like to call rock gate. Do you guys get it? Cause like it's like Watergate and like there's leak tapes and you know. The history enthusiast girlies will get it. Like you, they'll get it. Anyway, when this happened, I literally had no words. Like this especially pissed me off because she only does this cause she's mad that Sasha and Summer are dating. Like she doesn't even think about how this could affect Payson who is supposed to be her friend. She's never done anything bad to Lauren. Yeah, it's just, it's so bad. While Lauren's busy being the worst person on earth, Sasha decides to do a surprise visit to Kaylee while she's exercising at home because Sasha wants to have a conversation with her parents about her weight. Sasha's worried about your weight. 106 pounds, right in her target range. I'm sorry if it seems like I'm intruding. And so Sasha apologizes for intruding and leaves. And that is when we see Kaylee remove two individual five pound weights that she's had under her shorts, meaning that she's actually 96 pounds, which is below her target. Payson's been training with Sasha and it's been awkward, but Sasha talks to her and makes her feel a lot better. And so they're back on track. There, and there are bumps in the road, like any other relationship, but together, we can overcome any obstacle as long as we communicate. It's the election for the parent board president and Mr. Tanner is going head to head with Miss Keeler. In his speech, he does in fact compare Sasha to Hitler. No, I am not joking. We have let this gym become a dictatorship and the Fuhrer in charge is named Sasha Belov. 
but I'm not even gonna touch on that, especially since there's more drama to get to. Miss Keeler slays her quick little speech and Mr. Cruz endorses Kim Keeler, which is a big deal since he, like I said, he is the sitting president. His vote carries a lot of weight, so things are looking really good, but not for long, because out of nowhere, Ellen Beale shows up to the meeting saying she has information that the parents should see. I do have some information that is relevant to the parents about their coach and his inappropriate conduct. Miss Keeler is like, she's like, girly, if you have proof, then as a parent, we all have a right to know. And Ellen Beals is like, girly, you don't want to see this. But if you insist, then she holds up a picture of Sasha kissing Payson, which is clearly a screenshot taken from the video Lauren sent her in time stops. Pearls are clutched. People are falling out of their chairs. Pitchforks are being sharpened. All hell breaks loose. Miss Keeler tries to calm everyone down and she says that she knew about this. And while we, the viewers, know the full story of Rockgate, the parents do not. So this makes her look really, really, really bad. And in the end, Steve Tanner wins. Payson finds out about what Ellen did and she's absolutely mortified. I feel so bad because now everyone knows what happened, which is the last thing Payson wanted. Lauren, however, is absolutely thrilled because she thinks now now that Summer saw what kind of man Sasha is, she'll come running back to her dad and then she'll have a mom, which is the plan on the lawn. While Kaylee's sleeping, her mom is busy bringing her laundry to her room. She discovers the breakfast that Kaylee threw away, so she knows that something's up. And at the end of the episode, Steve gets a call and it's news that Lauren's mom, Leslie, was in a wreck. That wasn't her fault, by the way. She's still clean. And Lauren's mom has passed away. But when Steve tells Lauren, that girl does not give a flying crap. She does not care. She didn't love me. She didn't even want to see me. She was already dead to me. Payson shows up to the gym because she knows that if she hides out, people will think Sasha did something wrong. So when she walks in, she tells the girls to get the teasing out of the way. Let's hear it. Let's all have a good laugh at my expense and move on. Was Sasha a good kisser? Amazing. So good, in fact, that we're planning on eloping. The National Committee has come to a decision. They don't want Sasha training with the girls, and if any of the gymnasts decide to train with him, they'll be kicked off the national team. Mr. Tanner also announces that The Rock has suspended Sasha as club coach until further notice, and Beals will coach The Rock in the meantime. So it looks like Mr. Tanner and Ellen's plan worked out perfectly. Everyone say, thank you, Lauren. Sasha doesn't put up a fight because the girls really just need to focus on making it to Worlds because it's too important. Emily finds out that World Trials have been moved to Friday, which is really bad because Emily has her court hearing for stealing the medicine that Friday morning. So all I can say is good luck, Charlie. At practice, Austin tells Kaylee he doesn't want her competing in the World's Trials on Friday because she needs to get her strength back up. She tells him that Sasha and her parents weighed her and said that she's fine, but he doesn't believe her. How'd you fool Sasha and your parents? I'm not fooling my parents, Austin. Kaylee, I'm just telling you. No, I don't need you to tell me anything. I'm fine. Later, Summer tells Sasha that she doesn't think he did anything wrong and says that she loves him and he says it back. And y'all, they almost had premarital relations. Some come get Summer. But Sasha pumps the brakes before anything happens and Summer runs off. Back to a storyline I'm actually interested in. Lauren tells her dad that she's never going to her mom's funeral. She was a drunk and a drug addict and she never loved me. I am glad that she's dead. I don't need her hurting me anymore. It just really shows how much her dad screwed her up by not letting her ever see her mom. Cut to Summer crying in a church pew about almost breaking her vow to God, and she asks God to send her a sign of who to love. Then when she turns around, she sees Steve Tanner also crying in the pew, and they start talking, and Summer tells Mr. Tanner that she'll come with him to tell Lauren the truth about her mom. Damon's back in Boulder for reasons I really don't even understand, but something about making an album. His boss is with him and takes him to an ex rated adult establishment to find dancers for an upcoming music video and guess who's bartending miss kemetko or bambi as she goes by at work it turns out this is her secret second job she's been telling everyone that she works as an emergency phone operator but she really works here so miss kemetko is super embarrassed and begs damon not to tell emily she also tells damon about emily getting arrested because she's really in trouble and she needs help meanwhile across town kaylee walks in on austin talking to her parents behind her back about her having anorexia and how dangerous it is and kaylee is absolutely pissed off then guys this extremely cringy scene happens like i love kaylee and austin as much as the next girly but this was a lot and this was hard to watch so kaylee asks him what right he has to show up to her house and talking to her parents without her and god i hate it so much austin then chooses this moment to say that he's falling in love with her the first time i saw you 
you, I knew there was something special about you. Before you get a big head, it's not the way you look, because I've dated cuter girls. I haven't figured you out, but I want to, because once I do, I think I might fall in love with you. And Kaylee's dad tells him to get out because he's just not having it. In light of learning about Emily's news, Damon calls up his lawyer stepdad who he hates for help. When they show up to the office together, Damon's stepdad tells Emily that since she's a national gymnast without any priors, he thinks he can get her coordinate moved so it doesn't conflict with the world trials. And he tells Emily before they leave, all he has to do is call The Rock and verify that Emily is who she says she is and Emily's court date will be officially moved to a different day. Yay! So problem solved for Emily, right? Wrong. Because when the judge calls The Rock to verify, Ellen Beals picks up and she finds out what Emily did. The best lesson you can teach her is that there are consequences for your actions, not favors. Keep in mind, Emily's still waiting for a phone call from the court with a new date and she thinks that she's all good. So this girl just cannot catch a break. Finally, it's a day we've been waiting for. It's the World Trials Day. Before Emily can do her beam routine, Beals tells Emily that she knows about her fraudulent activities and it definitely rattles Emily's performance. While World Trials is happening, Payson and Sasha are treating in their new gym and Payson finally perfects her floor routine and Sasha has no notes so that's fun and fresh. It turns out that Sasha sent in his old coach who also happens to be his estranged father. How convenient, he just happened to be in town from Romania to sub in for coach. Kaylee's on bars and she's starting off with her round off for every amount that she's literally been killing herself to accomplish but her grip slips. Sasha's dad, who I'll be calling Big Belov, struts in and everyone's confused. He gathers up all the rock girlies and gives them a pep talk with their spirits now high thanks to a strange Romanian man. Lauren goes out and nails her vault and Kaylee dominates her floor routine. Remember, only the top six girls at the end of round two will advance to compete at Worlds and at the end of round one, Emily's in eighth. In other news, Sasha out of nowhere rolls up to Denver where the world trials are with Payson and her parents and demands that the national committee see her. So Payson does her floor routine and she's giving Barbie swan late and she slays. Like you can really tell that she's come into her own as an artistic gymnast. Sasha sees that his work is done and he's about to leave and the girls one by one start speaking up on Sasha's behalf to the national committee to let him stay. You have to let him stay. I wouldn't be the national champion without him. I wouldn't be anything without him. We don't care what people say. Sasha hasn't done anything wrong. Even Lauren defends Sasha, which pisses me off because girl, they're only in this position because of you. Like you were the catalyst, you started Rockgate. The committee tells Sasha he can stay and watch the meet, but this doesn't mean that he's back as the coach. Lauren's up next on bars, but she breaks down about her mom dying before she can compete and says that she can't do it. That's when Lauren's dad finally tells her the truth about her mom. Leslie tried to come to nationals, I kept her away. She tried to see you every year. I didn't tell you. <laughs> Knowing that her mom didn't think that she was a useless flop loser, Lauren goes out and competes in honor of her mother and she kills her routine and everyone gives her a standing ovation. Kaylee's up next on beam, but she's not looking so good. She's super shaky and her vision's really blurry. Austin notices this from the stands and rushes down to the floor and just in time because he's there to catch Kaylee when she faints and falls off the beam. Everyone's gagged and in shock because Kaylee is not waking up. As if things couldn't get any worse, remember how Emily thought the court date had changed but it really hadn't? Yeah. So Emily's up next on vault but right before she's about to go who shows up? The police. Coppers they're back and they're here to take Emily away because she skipped her hearing which she didn't think existed anymore. Luckily though Damon convinces them to wait to handcuff her until she finishes her vault. I can't believe that's a real sentence. Literally what is this show? Emily's shaken but after a pep talk she then slays the vault. Then she immediately gets walked out in cuffs in a Leo. Emily? Don't you worry about this, we'll, we'll straighten it all out. End of a look before she can even find out if she made the world team. Now it's time to find out the six girls who made it to world. So first place goes to a filler character. Second remains vacant for Kaylee because the committee wants to wait till she gets her medical evals back. If Kaylee can't compete, she'll lose her position on both the world's team and the national team. Third place goes to Lauren. Fourth goes to another filler. Fifth spot goes to Emily Kometko, who's behind bars. And sixth spot goes to- My special vote, Miss Payson Keeler. Yeah! You did it! You did it! 
I didn't doubt my iconic queen for a second. Like it's so deserved. Wow, love that for her. That means all the rock girlies made it to world. Well, that is if Kaylee gets better and Emily gets out of her orange jumpsuit. At the end of the episode, Payson gets a letter from Sasha. He thinks that since he showed up to the rock, he's only hurt the girls and he has literally left town for good. And in case you're wondering, cause I know you are, he did in fact take his trailer with him. So that was episode one through 10 of season two. It's a wild ride that's really only just getting started. I really hope you guys enjoyed part three, which will cover the last half of season two. will hopefully be out soon. Gonna be honest, I don't really know exactly when just because these videos take so long to make and school is my priority. However, I have so many videos planned for the fall and winter season. So you will be seeing a lot more me. Don't forget to subscribe and check out Squarespace using my code. I love you guys so, 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 so much. And thanks again for your support.